What's up, Space Engineers? Motherfucker Jones here. Excited as always to be with you again today. Today I have another type of video. This is going to be a... sort of the start of what might become a tutorial series, in which I am going to probably label technique tutorials, which basically just goes over the, uh, maybe ins and outs of what we do here at NKE, uh, as far as contraptions and things that we have used and have liked. So, anyway, uh, no, I will not stop doing ship videos. I still think that it's going to be a great thing for me to do. I've noticed a lot of you guys like the fighter style videos, and so do I, no doubt. So I'm going to continue in trying to give you more of those videos. So see that we will definitely see that in the future. For right now, I've had a huge issue making videos though because of the new style of Xbox homepage which well it doesn't allow you to uh, you know record past 10 minutes and I don't have that much time to um, go and you know edit thousands and thousands of hours you know two minute clips in here and there and you know I just don't have the time so using twitch so if you are curious to see me and the boys do some well, some fuckery, <laughs> needless to say, then go ahead and head on over to uh, twitch.com slash mfrjones and give me a follow if you'd like. You don't have to, but it would be super awesome if you did, if you like my content, and maybe also if you want to uh, get involved with the uh, NKE crew, that is a great way to do it, and I will be probably streaming on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, most likely. Maybe sometimes Fridays as well. Um, but today, like I said... We are going to be going over something that I've used called a, a ship printer. Most of you have seen these on the YouTube. So many people have their own styles. I haven't really seen that many, per se, uh, but we kind of came up with one, so to speak, um, based on uh, the limitations of our server. So this may or may not work for you, but it is probably one of the cheapest ways and most effective ways to print a ship uh, quickly, safely, and uh, also I should add that it doesn't really matter the size of your ship. I have tested this with quite a large ship, a 80,000 PCU ship, and I was able to print it in about four hours. So again, without further ado, let's get into how to actually make this. So from scratch, we are in survival mode, so we are going to be making this exactly as you would in a survival setting. What we would first need is going to be some batteries. I suggest six because the amount of welders you're going to be using on this is going to be intense. And so you want some reserve power, and of course it's always suggested that you have some source of uranium to do this as well. So as long as you have, you know, even a small reactor, I think would be fine to do this. So let's just go ahead and put some uranium ingots in here. So we have our power source. Now what we're truly only going to need is a container for our components to feed the welders. So let's just plop down a large container. And now from that container, we can branch out any kind of piping in order to get the allowed clearance that we want from our base to our welding system. From our welding system, it is pretty straightforward, but I'm going to just show you the way that I think it would probably help to set it up with is oop, do not place a do not place a welder right off the bat what you want to start off with is a wall of conveyor junctions splitting practically evenly from the inlet and this will be explained in greater detail later on so it's kind of pretty evenly spaced out not too important what is important is the cross hatching that I'm about to show you, or as I like to call it, cross hatching of the uh, welders. Okay, so now we have a whole wall of conveyor junctions, and that's usually not the best way to do things. I know it's a lot of conveyor junctions. A lot of conveyor junctions means a lot of windows and doors for things to jump through, rather, and that means a lot of calculations. So, what we're gonna do 
is basically cut out and jump out every single other block. So that. And then on the opposite rows, you kind of want to have it in the opposite way. Because they weld up a whole block around, I figured this would probably be one of the best ways to do it. So in the end, you should have a monstrosity looking like this. Well, now you do. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try to go through and cut out all the unnecessary bits. So maybe in between all of here, there, there. Also, this makes it a lot clearer for the components that are going to be moving from your container to the welders. It just makes it so much clearer to them where their path of travel should be. So you give them basically streets to run through and then houses to land at. This makes the welding process a lot simpler and uh, faster. So on this side is where I think I'm going to set up the aperture. And what we want to do is we want to orientate ourselves this way. So basically what we're doing here is we're going to take a ship and we're going to start the projection from an end of a iron block arm thing. I don't know what to call it. And we're going to extend it out with a series of only three pistons. So without further ado, let's get into this thing. We're going to use some light armor block and then... Uh, you can use decorative blocks if you want, just for shits and gigs. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually use uh, heavy armor here, just because I can and we're in creative, but the concept remains the same. You kind of want to use half slabs here, just for clearance for sake, and you'll see why in a second. So we kind of want to jut this thing off of the welder wall, at least, like a minimum of four to five blocks. You can go longer than that if you want to, but you want to be that far off just so your clearance is uh, accounted for. And once you've gotten to the spot where you think you'd be, uh, oh, I don't know why I deleted that. Once you think you'd be safe, we are going to just close off the loop. So now that we got our loop here, we are going to continue the end of the loop down to make not one, but two. Well, you could do one, but I like to do two pillars going downwards, no so to speak. Energy. Yes, yes, I know I have no energy. When you're here, what you want to do is you want to set up your merge blocks. Because this system uses merge blocks. So you, what you want to do is you want to take the face of the merge block there and you want to face it away from you. So that it's actually on the inside here. And then what you can do from there is every three blocks... So three block spacing, you can put another merge block. And another merge block. And another. As long as you want. The idea being that once you set up the projection, it moves on this system. Oh, I don't even know if that was the right way. Yes, it was. See? It hops from one merge block to the next, constantly carrying the projection while pulling it through a welder wall. So when the projection starts up, it'll seemingly be through that side, but you'll be pulling it down to there. So, let's get the contraption moving on again. In order to start the actual contraption itself, we want to start by placing a merge block connected with this top merge block that you have. 
you'll notice that they connect instantly. Even in survival, this will work if you just place it in and weld it up. From there, we want to keep the range of travel on our pistons as small as possible. Outwards here, you can stick it off the side like this, but the way I do it, I stick it on the bottom, which also helps for range of travel. So I will show you what I mean in a minute. So you place one piston on the side, facing out towards your welder wall, and then you face another piston perpendicular at the edge there. And then at that point, what you can do is you can put your projection up on that piston, if I can find the block. Oh gosh, it's hiding on me. There it is. So our projector has a orientation to it, which I'll teach you really quick. It is, so if you see this part of the block, you see how there's like four crosshairs pointing to the center? And you see that one, there's none, that one, there's none, that one, there's none, and then you rotate it back, it's the top. That is actually the top. So in order to get the correct orientation and not be confused, what I want to do to find the face is rotate it that way. So that's the face with the top and the bottom prongs in the circle. That's the face. And then that's the top. So, I like to do it that way, so that the face is out and makes it orientation a lot uh, easier, I think, for me. I mean, you can obviously set it up so that the face is looking towards that way, towards the welder walls. You could set that orientation up, whatever way you want. Anyway, moving on to the system. And then once there, we're going to go ahead and just plop another piston slapped on the side here, but as you will note, it doesn't really like to let you place it unless you have it just right, so in case you're having a really hard time finding just the right spot to place it on the side there, all you have to do is come up here to our top piston, which we're actually going to name now. It's also a good idea, of course, to name your articles. We're going to name this one piston top connect, or even better, top merge. And we're going to set the maximum distance of travel to only about 2.5. You only need enough to get it off the merge block. That's really all you need. And we're going to increase the velocity a little bit because we don't, we don't want it that slow. This isn't the part that needs to be slow. This part can be fast. So now that we have some clearance away from that part, it will allow us to place our piston. Now we also want to name that piston. Relatively the same style of naming, so we'll just call them Bottom Merge. And do the same settings for this as well. Make sure you have your maximum distance set down to 2.5 or whatever the top one was preferably, and of course your velocity, the same, preferably. Now don't reverse it yet, because we have to place a merge block at the end of that, facing towards our merge block on, of our, on our column here. So as you can see, that's all you need, and I think it's sort of self-explanatory on what happens from here. We should probably name our side piston here Projector Extendor. And that one can have a maximum distance of 10 meters because it will line up with the next set of merge blocks. At least it should in practice. Now with the velocity, you can set that whatever you feel comfortable with, but it shouldn't really be past 0.5 uh, reliably. So we're going to go ahead and set it at a 0.2, I'd say. Yeah, let's we'll go on the low, high end of 1, that's fine. Okay. 
Now that we have that set up, we're going to need some way to control it. Preferably from a station that you can charge up from so that your AI stops yelling at you about the power situation. From here, what we can do is we can go in to the control panel, we can type in piston, and that will give us our pistons. And from here, we can see that we have them named, we know which ones they are, and we can assign them to our hotbar. Now, it is also important to know what merge block is yours. So, in case you've gone too far, or seemingly too far, what you can do to find the right merge block is simply grind it down a little bit, and then once it's incomplete, you can go into your control seat, go into the control panel again, type in merge. And one of these should be incomplete. Why is that not? Hmm. Ah, well, see, that won't work, obviously, if you <laughs> if you are not connected to the grid. So that is one way to disconnect it. Anyway, like I was saying before, it actually still will work, but what you have to do from there is go into this grid and then name your merge blocks there. So merge block 7 here is incomplete. And we know it's the top one, so we're just going to name that merge top. And then, obviously, the other one on that grid is the merge block bottom. It's always important to name your bits and your parts. There we go. Now we know what merge blocks those are, we can go on to the second page here and command them manually. This way, we can see in third person and control our system down there. I know it's really hard to see, but it actually is extending at a slow rate. And then obviously we can do the bottom and top pistons. Now this is really key to the whole system because without it, it won't see what just happened there. It won't allow you to merge block the whole system up like that. It's really key to have the subgrid stacked on the subgrid perpendicularly to allow for the merge blocks to be able to move enough to hook up like that and that is why this system actually works. On. We need to assign all of our welders to a group so that's what I'm going to do right now just group them up as welders and we want to assign them to our hotbar. Now what we can do is we can go into our projector and pick a blueprint. Now, once you have all that set up, you can use your components in your container here, which I have none, but that's okay, to build your ship up. Got your components. So that's it. That's the whole system itself. Uh, I'm not going to go about printing the entire ship right now, but I will go ahead and show you that it works. So. Without further ado, we're going to turn our thrusters on. And we're going to probably have to give it a bit of an assist here. Just to get it started. Alright. Now we can hit our extension piston to pull the projection through the welder walls, and as it gets pulled through, it will slowly start to weld it up. You could even get out, because it's sort of automated right now, and make sure that all the blocks that you want to be welded up are being welded up, so you can go in here and start to use your hand welder and of course stay clear of the big red welders but now that you have a lot of room in between them you won't necessarily get killed as easily and I have some pretty nice angles going on here at the front of the ship and it hasn't seems to miss any spots right so we've reached the end of travel for this piston now what go back into our control panel we hit that bottom piston 
we merge it up you see how it connected right there we go to our top merge block turn that sucker off and we should be able to pull it away but for some reason it's not letting me why is it not letting me pull it away that's off I don't get it this was not a problem before it really wasn't well I guess if worse comes to worse like I said the system's really forgiving and if you're having an issue with it maybe just grind away the merge block that you're having an issue with and then of course if the piston is giving you a problem you can always just reverse engineer the piston now because you are merge blocked on the bottom there so like I said a very forgiving system so even if you mess up once in a big part of the uh, projection you should be able to manipulate it in such a way to where it's not that big of a deal for you so this is going to be our new top piston for the merge and if we name it the same it should line up in our hotbar and then this is going to be uh, we're gonna need to rename that merge block which should be that one here so we just need to reassign those so what we're gonna do is we're going to use our extender piston to not extend the projection out of the welders but rather bring our foot back to a position to where it can push the rest of the projection out and that should allow for it to reconnect up and you see it kind of jittered a little bit there that means it's connected that means I can disconnect the bottom one and then continue pushing the projection uh, out and if you find that like I am that even though you have the top connected and the bottom connected and everything still isn't working for you like I was saying you could always just grind this down again this is a freak problem the very first time that I tried to do this none of these issues happened like none whatsoever so sometimes stuff like this happens don't worry it's a very forgiving system Sometimes, apparently, all you need to do is grind down the piston head, and your projection will continue welding out. So, that's all it is to it. Rinse, wash, and repeat. If you keep on doing stuff like that, and you make sure that uh, your merge blocks are connected, this should only take, well, considering the size of the ship, maybe two or three hours. But, as you can see this style is uh, very forgiving and very cheap to make and can be reproduced uh, efficiently so thank you for watching that is how you go from nothing to a fully well eh, it won't fully automate your ship printing needs but it will definitely make them a lot easier than welding it by hand don't forget to like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I will get fighter videos as soon as I have time to make another one of these NKE videos. Thanks for watching, and of course, see you next time.